you're still watching Plus Politics and Plus TV Africa. Now, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, has threatened to begin another nationwide strike starting September 7. The association, in a statement signed by its president, Dr. Ali Sukumba, as well as the secretary and publicity secretary of the association, said the strike would commence after the 21-day ultimatum it gave to the federal government elapsed on August 17. The doctors are demanding from the federal government the implementation of residency funding, COVID-19 allowance, hazard allowance, as well as the outstanding salary shortfall of 2014, 2015 and 2016. On June 15, NAD had embarked on an indefinite strike. The strike was suspended on June 22 after the intervention of the federal government and other stakeholders in the health sector. Now, joining us to take a look at this latest decision by the association is its president, Dr. Ali Sokomba, and a public affairs analyst, Alester Wilkers. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Felicity. My Thank pleasure. you for having me. All right, Doctor, let's start with you. Yet another strike. What is going on? Thank you very much. Well, as you mentioned, we embarked on uh, a nationwide strike on the 15th of January, June 2020, uh, which lasted just about a week. And uh, the strike was suspended following appeal um, from well-meaning Nigerians as well as promises that were made as at then that our concerns would be addressed. Um, immediately, uh, the strike was called off. We had hoped that the period which we granted, that was four weeks then, that would be effectively and uh, efficiently utilized by governments to address our concerns. And at the end of the four weeks, we issued another four weeks grace period, making eight weeks, which elapsed on the 17th of, um, uh, on the 17th of August, 2020. And uh, at the end of that, again, we further extended the ultimatum again by another two weeks, making 10 weeks. So within these 10 weeks, any serious government that has intention of addressing the concerns and the plight of the resident doctors will have done something tangible. But unfortunately, all our appeals continued to fall on deaf ears. So at this point, we having exhausted all other options of getting our concerns addressed, I've had to resort to resuming the suspended industrial action. Uh, mind you, the strike we're embarking upon now is a resumption of this previously suspended uh, strike that lasted for just one week, and uh, we are planning to get it resumed because our concerns are yet to be addressed. Top on the list on our concern is the provision of life insurance for our members. We have continued to clamor that our members are continuously exposed to hazards and risk in their place of work. And as I speak with you now, we've lost 14 doctors to COVID uh, disease alone. And we've continued to lose more and more members to one form of disease or the other. So we have been clamoring that our healthcare workers be insured. They should have a life insurance uh, in place for them. And for those that have passed on in the course of uh, providing one form of service or the other should have uh, their debt in service benefits paid to their uh, next of kin. But unfortunately, since the policy came on, uh, on board in 2014, it has continued to remain not implemented. The second concern we have is the provision of... Uh, the funding that's required for residency training. Our program, the residency training program, is a time-bound program, and it's expected that we finish this program in a stipulated time. And uh, since the Residency Training Act was implemented in 2017, it has remained unfunded. So the program has continued to run without funding, and you know the important role funding has to play to the actualization of any objective. So All right, we doctor. have continued to suffer non-funding of our program, and we have received several promises. The last promise we got was from the Speaker of the National Assembly, who promised to have included the residency training funding in the budget. But unfortunately, that is not uh, materializing, it's not translating to having this fund available to those... I, I, I will come back to you, uh, Dr. Sekumba. I, I, I will come back to you. Uh, let's um, give um, Mr. Wilkers... Um, uh, 
time to just react quickly uh, to the information uh, we're talking about. Um, why do you think, Mr. Wilkers, it is hard for the government to address the concerns that are being repeatedly expressed by these doctors? Yeah, thank you, Felicity. I have taken time, a little bit of time, to listen to the uh, the my my colleague who is on the program. I think is the Dr. chairman Sokumba. of uh, NAD. Yes, uh, I think he's chairman of NAD. All he has enumerated has to do with my own, our own, our own benefits. And this has been the recurring decimal, as far as I'm concerned, that each time you hear the doctors talk. They are not talking about infrastructure. They are not talking about quality of service delivery to the to their to their client, which is the, the, the Nigerian public. They are only talking about their own personal benefit, their own personal benefit, their own personal benefit. Now, these are educated people, highly educated people, and for you to make any demand, you must be able to look at the indices as to if the demand you are making can be met. It's not enough to throw demands out there. Because for a while now, Nigeria, has been, Nigeria as a country has been going through very serious cash excruciating economic situation. And whereby for budgetary allocations to every sector has going to shrink. But you discover that people are not looking at how to bake a bigger cake or how to make better use of what's available not everybody wants to draw from the cake. It's their right to draw. Yes, I agree. But one must understand the reality of the guy. And when, you, and when educated people, people who have gone to school, people who are trained by this same country, because most of most doctors were trained by Nigerian universities, and they didn't pay COBOL to be trained as doctors. But I mean, Mr. Mr. Wilkos, I, I, I am compelled to interject. It's compared Mr. Wilkos. To where you will have been paid if you are trained outside the country. Mr. Wilkos, I'm compelled to interject and ask you um, this question. These demands are not new. Um, off the top of my head, no, they've, they're been, not. They, they've been talking um, 2014, 2015, 2016. We are in 2020. Um, wouldn't you say they exactly. have been patient enough? No, no, it's not a matter of patience. It's a matter of availability. Because even the demand you are making, like I said, most of this demand centers around personal benefits, not about how the healthcare system in the country will become better for the common man. But you have to they're start not, from somewhere, don't you think? To improve the needles and the hospital equipment. So you've not heard them to say that. All you hear them say is, we are going on strike because of salary, because of payment of allowances, because of call duty allowances. Every that consigns them, that's what they go to strike on. And for me, that's a problem I have because the country is grappling with serious economic challenges. And that is much more situated in this argument. I don't have a problem if doctors are asking for their right, but they must be situated in line with the economic realities of the country. Because no government will be, will be that adamant not to meet needs if the needs can be met. All right, uh, let's go back to you, doctor. On the flip side of this argument, um, some things that uh, Mr. Wilkos have mentioned, um, you get paid salaries quite all right. These are allowances um, that need to uh, be paid. There are those who are also arguing that doctors have been patient this long. What's a few more months knowing that we are in a pandemic? Well, I will want to, first of all, make a correction. Group life insurance is not an allowance. I don't know the understanding of my colleague about what group life insurance is. Group life insurance is securing, providing that when a person dies while working, which I don't think anybody hopes to uh, die anyway, we, nobody wants to die, but in the event you die while working, that your family has something to rely on before getting back on their feet. That's what group life insurance is. So what we are asking is that we want to be insured. We don't want the money. I don't want to die. So I don't want to ever get benefits from group life insurance. So I want my colleague to understand that as we all are working now, none of us wants to ever benefit from group life insurance. We want to live long and die and die when we have retired. So it's not an allowance we long to have. 
So all we are asking is that we want that available and you the all know what that means. That, that if no I know what that happens, I have a group yeah. life insurance available for me, I can work with all my heart knowing that if I die in the course of working, that I, my family will be safe. And that translates to better service delivery to Nigerians. I don't know if he sees it that way. The second thing we are also clamoring for is the funding of residency training program. Residency training program is a program that is um, um, carried out in Nigeria to produce specialists, to provide specialist care to Nigerians. So I don't know if that also does not translate to better service delivery to Nigerians. It's a process of provide, producing specialists. And it's a time-bound program ranging from four years to eight years, as the case may be. So within the period this act has been enacted since 2014, some people have started their program, 2017 rather, and have finished their program without getting any source of funding. It's a program that is time-bound and it cannot wait continuously forever to be implemented. All right, if Doctor, we, we, time, we are time uh, constrained. So um, I'm going to interject in quickly because I have a couple more questions for you. Um, I'm saying you've been patient this long. We are in a pandemic. I mean, no matter what you, you disagree with, Mr. Wilkers, one truth is that we are in a pandemic, an unprecedented situation where nobody knows what to expect in the coming days. So um, I'm, 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 I'm asking you now, you've been patient this long long the situation is uh, uh, quite unfortunate what's a few more months maybe um till we have a sense of where we are headed well i will say that that will have been the case if the other factors other conditions were to remain the same i just mentioned that we've lost 14 doctors so far from january up to this moment i wish you could tell death to, to just patiently wait until COVID-19 is over and not take any of our members. And perhaps that we will be able to wait too. Because as our members are dying, the, the, the death that is carrying them along is not waiting till COVID-19 is over. Again, our residency program is also continuing. I don't know if you are aware that exams are coming up sometimes in three weeks' time. And that is also not going to wait until COVID is over. So the factors... The, the determinants of our demands are not waiting until COVID is over. Unfortunately, these are not demands that are high polluting, that are not achievable. Providing life insurance is a government policy. We never ask for it. Governments on their own stipulated and enacted the law. They should be able to do what they have uh, set aside. If they want to repeal the law, they should go through the processes and get the law enacted. Uh, uh, all right. Repealed. Dr. Sokoba, I, I, am, I am so sorry. I, I actually thought we had a little more time for us to talk a bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry I had to interject again uh, to give Mr. Wilkers at least 30 seconds for his um, final thoughts on the matter. Mr. Wilkers, please. Well, well I believe so much. I, I sympathize with my colleagues. But sincerely, like the question you asked him, he could not answer it. The entire world is standing still. Schools are not on, schools have been closed for a while and everything. And for me, really and truly, I'm not saying doctors do not deserve the best they do, but most of them, after being trained by Nigerians, they all still move abroad to use this training to go and uh, in, uh, uh, improve their lives and other places. Doctors are trained right from the university. They are trained almost free of charge. They are trained while in residency. They are paid as well and they are being trained. So if at a point in time, the government cannot meet, not because the government do not want to, but they cannot meet, you cannot quantify you are being on strike because you didn't have life insurance. I know what life insurance is. I work in the insurance industry, and I promote yeah. it. I know what it is. You can always take that by yourself, by a union. But you cannot say because there is no life job for you, then Nigerians should die. You should go on strike in the midst of pandemic and then kill more Nigerians. All now, right, uh, Mr. Wilkins. Protect, just remember all the hypocritical oath that you've taken to protect the entire Nigeria and that you are supposed to protect. So that is the, the that is the very, very... Right. Uh, Thank you line. very you much, Mr. Wilkers. I'm afraid we have to leave it there now. Thing. Because your salaries are paid Mr. by Mr. Wilkers, you thank you very government. much. And so you, you, you have less responsibility uh, uh, than to protect Nigerians. And strike at this time cannot set to be the way out. All right, Mr. Wilkos, thank you very much uh, for your time with us and your thoughts. And also, uh, NAD President, uh, Dr. Ali Sokumba, thank you very much. And I hope that there is a resolution, um, resolution soon enough so patients don't suffer. Thank you again for your time.
It's always my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Please. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, to wrap things up, here's my take. Before this pandemic, we knew we had a health care crisis in this country. As about 70% of Nigerian resident doctors and nurses were either leaving the country or writing various foreign examinations to that effect, they argue that there was no need to spend the remaining decades of their career in a system that would not profit them and the sector they represent. With the coronavirus, the situation remains the same. This dire situation, in my thinking, presents a good opportunity for the government to do something meaningful to encourage our healthcare professionals and let them know that there is hope for change. Government can also, by their actions, set the tone for an overhaul of Nigeria's health sector by refusing to travel abroad for medical assistance. I mean, we all now know that a scenario can come where we don't have a choice. We will all be compelled to leave or die by the systems we put in place. Thank you very much for your attention while the program lasted. You can watch all our episodes of Plus Politics on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. The program returns on Monday, same time. Until then, please be well. <laughs>